Good evening, everyone. Right, just a minute. All right. How are you doing? All well? Good evening. Ready for the clairvoyance? <laughs> the ability to see something else? Anyways, so just give me a moment. All right. So we'll start off with a short prayer. Kindly close your eyes. Connect onto your palate. Inhale and exhale. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Coxwilot Maha Guruji Mailing. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, healing ministers, healing angels. To all the angels and great beings of theosophy, the masters of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and the internet connection, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings. Thank you for all the light, knowledge and wisdom being imparted to us today. We ask you to help us to have a greater and deeper, clearer understanding of these priceless teachings, to have the strength and courage to see through it clearly and to make it part of our lives so we may become better instruments in your service. Let thy will be done, not the urges of our lower nature. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. We thank you with gratitude, respect and love. Atma Namaste again. Welcome to the session We'll continue with our favorite chapter, I think, at this point. <laughs> We've been going back and forth several times, so I think this is still part C of this particular book. So, should finish. Um, today. Should finish. Um, you have to talk, right? Because you no, we finished up to the, um, up to the gaping mouths and the crustacean creatures. I spoke about all that. You have to start <laughs> talking about, the, you spoke about the, Okay, I think the entities posing or accepted as tribal deities from whom blood sacrifice are made are very low grade creatures possessing ethnic bodies, for it is only through those ethnic bodies that they can absorb physical fumes and derive either nourishment or pleasure from them. So, um, I've explained this in the past when we were talking about elementals and how they work and um, how they, they're not really bad, they're just low grade creatures and uh, like attracts like, so whatever is their food, they want that, right? So I think that's it. We can continue from stories of white men. All right. So um, we we've been looking at you know how the different ways um, we have the ability to try and look. So far, they've been giving us more what we would see. Uh, however, here at this point, they talk about an ointment that could be placed on the eye, and it could actually enhance your ethnic vision. However, they also mentioned that it's, it's not just anointing your eyes, but more or less placing it on the entire body. So when you place it on the entire body, then the astral body, yes, so what basically happens when you rub it over the entire body, it says some ointments assist the astral body to leave the physical in full consciousness. But the application to the physical eye might stimulate etheric sight, yes? And so it is a means in which you would probably move out of your physical body. And then because you're in the astral body, you can actually see things around, right? And so they mentioned this has been one of the ways in which you can actually have uh, etheric sight. So uh, what happens is uh, when you have this etheric sight, they're talking about how it then makes visible to you the etheric double or the energy body of other humans around you. Now, not only the humans who are alive, but also the dead ones. And so they give you the example of how you might even see, uh, remember what we were talking about, especially if it's a recent death, you might have the etheric body just hovering over the grave of the person who's just deceased. And so they say that. And then they also mentioned what we spoke about earlier. In the seances, you will see that the matter, uh, the etheric matter is actually moving out of the left side, yeah, the left side of the person's body that becomes very very visible and another thing that they talk about is um, they say that uh, the etheric site makes visible new colors now these colors are quite different from what you and I see in the physical world and they say that uh, 
for people who can see it, it's indescribable because it, they are beautiful colors and, and not really something that you find in the physical world. So it's difficulty for them to even tell you what they're seeing, yeah? And uh, so they say that in some cases, uh, these other colors are combined with the colors that we know of. So they might talk to you about a pink, but they'll try to say, you know, it's like that, like that bright pink, but it's like this pink, <laughs> but they can't really explain because it, it is so uh, amazing and beautiful. And probably the English language or any of the languages that we speak uh, do not have a word to describe it. And so with our limited vocabulary, with the, the colors that we know and the words that we know, even artists would find it difficult to reproduce uh, or explain to us what it's about. And so it says here, so that two surfaces, which to the ordinary eye appears to match perfectly, would appear different to the etheric eye. Yes. And so whatever we see in the physical world is completely different for them in the physical world. Even the colors that you and I might be able to say, you might say, you know, a purple and a yellow looks really good, but for them, it doesn't look like purple and yellow. It might look completely different on the, in the etheric world, right? Now, moving on to another person who can see, they're talking about the chemists. Uh, chemists do love what they do. Uh, we're not talking about the drug, uh, the drug shop down the road. We call them also chemists. We're talking actual people who work with chemicals, yeah? So the, chem uh, the chemists would have an amazing world again to observe. And they mention about how uh, he will be able to then see a completely fresh world, not just with liquids and gases that he's used to, but the combination of other things that he may not even be aware of. And so they go on to say that uh, the minerals, right, because chemists do use minerals. And he says, in the mineral kingdom, there exists a, a whole array of uh, elements or minerals that are still unknown to what you and I would call the Western world, right? Or the, uh, the Western sciences. They are not aware of it yet, but there are many more. Now, they don't necessarily have to be remembered in the physical form. So in the etheric form, they can still see certain uh, minerals. And so they talk about you and I. Uh, if you've done the earlier session with me, which was... Uh, the textbook of Theosophy, uh, which is also there for, uh, for you to watch at any point, the recording is free for you. Uh, so what happens is in that we have what is called rounds, right? And, and there is the human race that has evolved through time. And so at that time, in the first round, they talk about how you and I are basically made out of etheric matter. And <laughs> when we were made out of this etheric matter, they say that we resemble something like, a, you know, the cloud that floats today. We were like that. There was no uh, mass with us. So we just floating on the surface of the earth like clouds. That's what they, they talk about. And so they say even the body of man at, that, at one point was purely etheric and resembled a wake drifting and almost shapeless cloud um, actually hovering over the surface of the earth. And then they go on to move, uh, they move on to talk about how this etheric site can also help you determine whether a person is healthy and for healers to find out whether the path that you are healing is actually becoming better, right? Is it really healing? And so they say it would also inform us of the healthiness or otherwise of our surroundings. I would say also your patient's body. And we are able to detect a disease germ and other impurities, right? So within the body uh, now surrounding you. So maybe <laughs> I'm not sure if these people can actually see the COVID uh, that's probably floating around or affecting people. But this is something that they're able to see. So when they talk about germs, um, I'm presuming they should also be able to see bacteria and viruses as well and other impurities. Yeah, so do you want me to continue or? No, I can go. All right. So uh, the beneficial effect of no, travel are partially due to. Sorry, I just asked you. Then I said, no, I can talk. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, what are we saying? Uh, yeah, the entities posing or accepted. Okay, this is done. The stories told of ointments and drugs which applied to the eyes enable a man to see fairy people have a basis of truth. I think this dead some cartoons and stuff, right? <laughs> In some movies. Yeah, yeah. They open up their, their clairvoyance. Uh, no anointing of the eyes could open the astral vision, though. Yeah. Mm. yeah okay. Only the etheric. And uh, if rubbed over the whole body, uh, some ointments assist the astral body to leave the physical 
in full consciousness. That is very interesting because that is what the um, many uh, cultures do. Uh, I think in India, you have this tribe called the Agoris and they are known for uh, rubbing uh, vibhuti, right? Or something all over their body. They look like white ash. And there are some shamans who do that as well. Oh. And certain other, uh, you know, cultures who do that as well. So it's interesting. So that's why they do it according to the author. But the application to the physical eyes might easily stimulate etheric sight. I don't know. Most of the ointments I've seen tell you not to put stuff in your eye. No, it's over the eye. On the eyelids. I think that's what they mean. Not on your eye like the eyeball. So that's why some tribal, they probably have that stuff, you know. So, yeah. Maybe that's how makeup was invented. <laughs> they start putting stuff on. Oh, it looks amazing. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, maybe it would be good for have clairvoyant makeup. <laughs> Look good and see good. What? what? Okay. Yeah, that could be a way. I mean, it's not something I'm okay. <laughs> intrigued by, but yeah, it could be. You think the man is hiding something? See to him. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, no astral, only etheric. At this point, yeah. We're only uh, talking about etheric sight. Now, etheric sight, of course, would, of course, uh, make the etheric doubles up. Of course, you can see. If you can see, like I explained this also earlier, um, it's basically the frequency and the range at which you can see. So if you can see a certain amount of range and you are able to perceive, sense and see uh, etheric uh, matter. Uh, and then uh, as your range increases, you'll be able to see because you see astral is more subtle. So the inner aura is the, sometimes some people might only see the inner aura, but maybe not the health rays and outer aura to a certain extent. Some people up to the health rays only. Um, because the outer aura is, of course, less dense. So it's more difficult to see. And then if you go to the astral body, of course, it's more subtle. And then the mental body is more subtle. So you have to uh, improve the sensitivity of your equipment in order to be able to perceive them, number one. And number two, in order for your brain to perceive what you're seeing, right? So yeah. two trainings have to happen. Actually, more than two, but those two definitely. And, okay, all this oozing stuff we spoke about already and the graves. And uh, etheric sight makes visible several, several entirely. I don't know. I mean, etheric colors are similar to physical colors as far as I can, uh, based on my experience and the experience I've had with many clairvoyants. It's, it's similar. That's why for those of you who've done advanced planet healing, uh, you know, you project green uh, and it's green. It's not, it is etheric color, but you know, it's, um, it's different. Uh, but um, the colors in the book are not exactly the, the exact color. Uh, of, you know, there's only a certain limitation to what um, we can do with painting and with printing. So according to Master Cho, at that point, he's like, this is the best we could do. So it's the closest you come to the colors. So I think we're one of the few who gave very scientifically um, what each color looks like in the, the etheric chakras. plane. Um, I, th I think one thing we have to remember is, for example, it was very difficult in the old days to show something that's illuminated, right? Uh, so if the colors are dazzling and illuminated, today with technology and other things that we have, we probably might be able to emphasize and show that. But in the old days, like even Master Joe says, what we have in our, in our books, uh, even the chakras, is a very dull image of what it actually looks like, which means that what you see is super brilliant but it cannot be replicated and probably even properly described with the English language uh, to help you and I understand what it actually looks like, how magnificent it looks. Magnifico. Okay, magnifico. Um, for the chemist, uh, a whole fresh world would come under observation as he could deal with ethers as he now deals with liquid gases. So how does a chemist deal with liquid gases? He experiments. Yeah. Right? So now, uh, if you're a pranic healer, then you are a, what you call, you can write in your business card, psychic chemist. I experiment with colors and I mix two colors. Actually, don't experiment. That is dangerous. <laughs> uh, just use the colors in the book. But Master Joe was the psychic chemist. So um, then um, it's too bad. I don't have it for a presentation. There are a lot of quotes by Master talking about some of this stuff from the advanced book. Advanced book is right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
There are belonging to the mineral kingdom many etheric substances. The existence of which is unknown to Western science. Uh, there are also a lot of physical substances that are unknown to Western science. So I don't know what the point of saying that was. Uh, even the bodies of men in the first round were constructed, blah, 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 blah. You know what is intriguing? We know, uh, for those of you who have read Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul, we know uh, that the etheric body is held together by a certain life energy that comes from the life cord. Life cord through the physical permanency radiating outwards, holding everything in place. Because etheric matter is more subtle than gas. And if you see a steam or you boiling water, the steam dissipates everywhere. But this special type of energy, because of this, it holds everything in place. And we have discussed this as well in the previous chapters. However, it would be interesting to know what holds the etheric energy of these elementals and all these beings in place. Do they also have a certain core from somewhere, from the group soul or something like that? I do not know. Uh, I've not read enough to be able to decipher that. But it's very interesting how certain etheric substances don't uh, dissipate. Uh, how they don't dissipate, they just stay there. Now with regards to germ, like for a germ, the germ has etheric body. What, they, what are they saying? Uh, what are they saying here? Uh, etheric side will inform us of the healthiness, blah, blah, blah. But so obviously, see. if you can see the good, you can see the bad, right? And so, uh, and you can see the used up etheric prana, you can see fresh etheric prana, you can see all sorts of etheric prana in different stages of usage. And of course, germs, uh, although they're physical, based on the principle of correspondence, they would have etheric bodies. And normally, if you uh, look at germs, I've never seen one. Because they're invisible to me, um, <laughs> to my eye. Uh, uh, they he, don't... He's an engineer, he's not a doctor. Or a... Okay, yeah. So um, if, if you, um, as far as I know, you don't get one germ. There are a lot of them, right? Millions or hundreds of them, at least in per square millimeter or inch or however they, they calculate it. And so combined, you won't see each one's ethnic body, you'll see the combined ethnic body. So then it's easier to see. So the more they are, the easier. And in the so, body, it would probably be more condensed. Even out of the body, you know, so uh, they would be, if they're there still alive on a surface, then we should be able to see. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Good information. Good information. All right. Uh, now let's move on to uh, the next part where we're going to talk about when you and I move from, for example, your home <clears throat> uh, to a holiday spot, uh, to different parts, <clears throat> what actually happens. So they're actually talking to us about the healthiness of basically nature because the etheric substance or the etheric energy in different parts, right? Uh, so the etheric and the astral influence in, in a place where the ocean is, you know, um, clean, where the mountains are not spoilt by us. I'm talking about even the garbage that, that is thrown into it. Uh, they mentioned the forest, the waterfalls, such pure or what they call virgin places, the etheric uh, matter and the astral matter is not really disturbed as much. And they have an influence on you and I, on our etheric and our astral body. And so I remember when I was reading the story, I don't know if you can call it the story, but uh, it's basically the life of uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, who started off with psychology, right? And one of the things that they would do in those days when people are emotional or psychologically imbalanced, they would actually send them up to the mountain. So that was the medicine, right? In those days for people to kind of mellow down and emotionally calm themselves down and mentally become more still before they come back down. And so uh, the medicine was to go up and stay in the mountain for one full month. Yeah, something like that. And so when I look at what they're saying, I understand why. Because there are many people who've had severe ailments and they've left their life in the city. They've gone out to a, a farm. They've gone out and they've actually stayed out uh, in forests or mountainous areas in a cabin. And they've actually come back healthier, right? Actually healed. Uh, let's put it that way. So what's actually happening in any, many of these situations. This is my understanding of it, yeah? So uh, it could be wrong, but this is how I see it. So they say that each of these special types of energies, right? Whether it's in the ocean, the mountain, it's a beautiful waterfall or in the forest or in the woods, they say that uh, they have a special type of life. And the life includes the astral and etheric as well as what is visible. 
And so it has its own imprint, impressions or impress, imp, it, it imprints on our astral and etheric body things that are actually better for us from that level, yeah, from the etheric and the astral level. So they say that many of the unseen entities are pouring out vitality. So, which means invisible entities are also there, uh, like we were talking about earlier, the nature spirits, and there are other beings around. And of course, the trees as well. They are all pouring, uh, pouring out a lot of vitality, which is not used by anyone. And it is, you know, a, a place where it is available in abundance. And if you're going to walk there, your entire aura, your various vehicles, the etheric, the astral, the mental, are all going to just sap it all in and start actually feeling better. So they say there's a lot of vitality here. And um, the vibration with which they radiate awaken unaccustomed portions of our own etheric and astral bodies, yes. And so what happens is uh, they say it's similar to, you know, when you go and exercise, but if you're used to walking, your body is used to walking, but suddenly when you decide today, you know what, I'm going to start to jog and you start using a different set of muscles. Or you decide, you know, forget walking and running. Today, I'm going to do yoga. And yoga will make you stretch and pull <laughs> muscles that you never thought existed in your body, right? And so they say it's similar to that where you feel that you have suddenly brought into existence uh, the, the, or activate, uh, the, or bring into activity the certain muscle that you've never really worked on. And so they say, for example, it could be swimming suddenly that you might decide to do in the sea um, and you find that when you go to these places and do this you feel charged energized right so that's why it is useful and they say one of the ways to beat stress is to actually go on a holiday uh, to not to another busy place um, but to a quieter place where you can enjoy nature you can enjoy the space around because there's a huge abundance of vitality which can actually revitalize you and you allow the stress to leave and this energy comes and fills itself in. And so you do feel much, much better. Yeah. It's a little weird. Today's the first day I just have blank screens. So there's no human except myself because even Amit is out of the screen. I'm just looking at myself. So I wish there were a few people with little faces there. Anyways. Uh, so that was with reference to, you know, why. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Seema. So it, it would be nice when, you know, you go on, uh, go traveling. And if you do go to these places, sometimes certain areas in Europe, certain areas in America, certain areas in India, when you travel way out, where there's very, uh, very little population or no population, you really feel good, right? So do take time to go out if you can into the forest and other areas, depending on where you live, uh, which makes a big difference uh, to our energy. And if there are like huge trees, ask permission to absorb the energy from these great trees. Um, if you're in the sea, ask the beings in the sea to help cleanse you. So these are things that you could do to further, you know, help yourself in healing uh, when you go to these points. Yeah, uh, we'll come to your questions in a bit. Let me just finish a couple of more things. Um, now, the, the other thing is they're talking about you and I trying to sleep. Um, if you remember old stories, uh, if you're in India or in places, even in Southeast Asia, when people traveled, um, even I think in the Middle East, uh, when they would travel to sell their dates or travel to sell their wear, they would actually walk. And they walk through the whole day and then they try and find a tree to rest under. Now, you've got to remember these people are from a different part of the earth and so they, they talk about the pine tree. It doesn't have to necessarily be only the pine tree. It could be any tree that is healthy if you sleep under it. And we all know that weary travelers have done this. They lay down. And they mention here, interestingly, to face north. So those of you who have done master's pranic feng shui, or you know feng shui, you know what that means. So that energy further helps to energize you, energize your energy body, energize your energy centers. And so you feel revitalized when you wake up and you can continue with your journey onwards. Yeah. Now here they also talk about the currents of the, the magnetic currents of the earth moving uh, through and as these currents go through your um, system, your energy body and astral body, it's like it combs it, right? And at the same time gives it energy. So when, when you, you know, uh, there are times when Noel would also try and kind of comb my hair out and I really start feeling sleepy. I don't know if this is common. <laughs> I always feel like that. 
So when, when you actually comb the, the so-called head health aura, a lot of people start feeling uh, kind of relaxed and light and sometimes they even doze off. So if you're a healer, you notice that there are times uh, when you do healing that uh, we have situations where uh, just at the beginning of the healing, suddenly <laughs> your patient is already gone to sleep. And by the time you finish your healing, uh, he or she is feeling really, really good. So you can sleep. They, they talk about how these energies move through you. Uh, they disentangle uh, the health rays and they strengthen part, particles of both the astral and the etheric body. And thus give you rest and you feel quite calm. Yeah. So that is one. The second is from the pine tree, there's a lot of radiation of vital energy coming out which also is absorbed by, remember your spleen does this constant work, right? So it absorbs this. And again, uh, another reason why man feels so good. Um, I remember, um, you know, sometimes when you go to these hotels and they have these huge lawns and they allow you to rest under a tree, there are times that we actually gone to sleep and we feel so good when we get up. It's very rare for you to do that in your residential area, but uh, this, this is an opportunity if you ever get, please enjoy it. Right now, they say that these magnetic uh, uh, these magnetic tide tides uh, they they kind of outflow and backflow. This energy continues between even the Earth and the Sun. So there's there's another current that they're talking about that goes back and forth, and it changes at 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. So at noon and at midnight, they say that uh, that's the time when these things turn. Yeah, the turning point for for this magnetic field. I don't know too much about that, so I'm, I'm just going to move forward uh, and end with the last current that we're talking about. So they talk about next the great etheric current, which are constantly sweeping over the surface of the earth, starting from the North Pole, going to the South Pole as well. This is another one. So we have the magnetic uh, flow of the earth. We have the earth and the sun flow. And now we have the great uh, currents, etheric currents. Now, this is not magnetic. Yeah? Remember, we're not talking about magnetic in the third one. It's the etheric currents. So the last one uh, flows from the North Pole to the South. And they have their own powers. And uh, people who know how to use it, they can actually kind of, um, how do you say it? You know, you know, like how the battery is able to absorb electric energy. You can then absorb that etheric energy. But if you do not know how to do it, they say it's dangerous. Yeah. So I have no clue. They have not mentioned the technique here. They just talk about these great methods. And so for safety's sake, right, if you don't know what it is, it's just great as knowledge <laughs> for the rest. I would say stay safe, not just from the coronavirus, but also these kind of techniques if you're not uh, fully aware of what to do. Yeah. Uh, don't try and absorb this etheric energy if you do not know what it is. So with that, I'll stop. I'll hand it over to Amit. Uh, someone had asked about the uh, etheric aura in the Psychic Cell Defense book being orange. It's not. It's the shield that you put around the, uh, the, the general shield that you put around the etheric body that is orange in color for the specific uh, reason to protect the etheric body. Yeah. But the etheric aura is not orange. Yeah? Just to clarify that. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely not orange. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be like those Sorry, uh, Fanta boys, right? Or Mirinda. Which one does? Mirinda men. <laughs> Mirinda. Right. Duk, 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 duk. Right. So, the question is, why is it orange? Because orange is expelling, for those of you who don't advance for like healing, and um, uh, expelling for etheric matter. So, any uh, diseased etheric matter that comes into contact with it will be easily expelled by the orange. Okay, so where were we? Um, we're traveling mineral. and enjoying okay. the, the benefits beneficial effects of travel are partially due to the change of the etheric and astral influences connected with each plane and district so each type of area whether it's an ocean the prana the quality quantity and types of pranic energy astral etheric and other types of pranic energy would be different from if you would go to the ocean obviously it would be very different from if you went to the mountain and very different from if you went to the forest and the waterfalls and the waterfall right um for example swimming under uh, with a waterfall is completely different from swimming in the ocean it's very difficult to swim in the waterfall <laughs> around the waterfall <laughs> underneath the waterfall <laughs> sorry you can go for modeling there take photos, photos. <laughs> um so um 
Now, why do we need to do all this? Uh, it's basically like you have different types of food, right? Right? Although you have, um, number one, your bodies. Okay, maybe it's not, that's a bad example. Hmm. Anyway, maybe later. There are lots of, there's a whole spectrum of etheric types, uh, etheric energies. And uh, certain areas will give you very high quality of cleansing etheric energy. Some areas will give you a high quality of energizing etheric energy. Um, uh, and certain like more earth prana in certain areas. Um, the ground prana in the sea is extremely clean and is a little bit different from the ground prana in the forest, for example. Okay. So anyway, we'll maybe look at that later. Can I add something there? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things I remember Master Cho with, uh, I'm not sure if it's there in the books, I suddenly can't remember now, but he would say it's good for you to bury yourself in the earth, right? Because then you're able to absorb this. But when you do that, the beach has to be clean. You can't just go to a place and just bury yourself. But if you can find a clean beach, uh, it would be nice to kind of, you know, uh, create that little space for yourself and then, see that the, the lovely beach sand is all over your body and just rest there for a few minutes, right? So this is something that we, we have done uh, when Master Cho was there and then go into the sea and bathe yourself. Really very, very different because uh, it's, it's almost like you can hear your own heartbeat and it feels like your heartbeat is all over the body. It's a little strange, but different people have different experiences, but it's worth an experience if you do get that opportunity. Yeah. So... I don't have time to go into detail of how each place is different because Master Cho would like to go to different places. He would like to go to the mountain and, he would, and certain types of rays, certain types of people, uh, depending on what you're doing there, like if you're doing spiritual activity, if you're doing other activity, if you want cleansing, it depends. So certain places are more conducive uh, than the others. Now, obviously the ocean is for cleansing and for healing which is why uh, most people go to beautiful resorts by the ocean to relax, right? Um, and dip in the sea is really good. Yeah. Now, it's talking about, um, and it not really exercises the muscle. What they're trying to say is like this. It does exercise. Remember what I was talking about? There are these beings, obviously, like attracts like, right? So when you have all these types of vitality, energy, good things there, it'll attract beings just like how it, these octopuses and all are act, attracted to blood and all that stuff. Same on the opposite Not side. Not the octopus, but the octopus. Not the octopus. The, the, I mean, we're talking about the drug. Thing. Sorry, the alcohol. The previous uh, thing. Yes. I know what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, it is. Octopus mm -hmm. looking creatures. Yeah, octopus. Savage octopus like monsters. Yeah. And uh, red brown crustacean creatures. Rapacious. <laughs> red brown. Anyway, so all these things, right? If they're attracted to that, then the good quality energy, all the stuff there, um, attract a lot of beings which like to eat those kind of energy. And those beings in itself, their presence is healing. And so when you're in that space, without you knowing, you invade their privacy, your body is interpenetrating their bodies. So, but their presence is uh, the vibrations of their body increase the vibration of yours. Remember I gave you the talk about how uh, the energy is fluidic and people come close to each other. So there's a psychic osmosis or a transference of energy. So uh, same thing, when you're walking through these places, there is a psychic osmosis or energy transference. And also just, they don't even need to do anything, just their presence, you're, in, you're, in, you're interpenetrating their energy. So that in itself exercises all your different etheric muscles. And that, that really feels good. And of course, different places will have different beams. Okay. Um, now, um, where was this? Yeah. Anyway, so if you look at uh, now this bearing underground and all, we'll talk about it. Uh, such as uh, swimming, especially in the sea, are of ex a special value for the reasons I named. Well, of course, exercise is extremely uh, uh, beneficial for the etheric body because, based on the principle of correspondence, which said, remember, we spoke about this, uh, I think so where what happens to the energy body will affect the physical body, but also what happens to the physical body will affect the energy body. So if you move your neck like this, the throat chakra, which is located here, if you know about chakras or energy centers, starts to also get stimulated and cleanse and energize. 
So that's why if you look at runners, they have, or people who exercise regularly, their auras are much bigger compared to normal people who don't exercise. And that's why if you speak to someone who exercises very regularly, after a day or two of not exercising, they feel heavy or tired or something like that. Some people, if they're stressed, they go for a run, uh, depending on how much stamina you have and how, uh, how long you've been doing it. So, so that is uh, obviously that. Now, the swimming in the sea is not necessarily only because of exercise. The sea water is highly cleansing. Not only that, the air around that place has a lot of salt, which breaks down dirty energy. So when you inhale that into your lungs, uh, not only is it good, remember now they have salt rooms in hotels, um, you know, in the spas and stuff for you to cleanse your lungs, but not only cleaning physically, but also uh, energetically, it's extremely cleansing. I knew about this teacher, okay, Master Choa, but uh, some, uh, one of the students took him to a disco. And uh, he's very humble, so he went to the disco. This is what I heard. And uh, he went to the disco and uh, they took him, I think, uh, two, three times, thinking that he would enjoy that kind of thing, right? So they took him, you know, in the olden days. And these are pre, uh, pre ban of smoking in public area type of thing. So you can imagine uh, a highly developed teacher marinating in smoke and, you know, people gyrating everywhere and, you know, having a good time. And he was, he was interesting. And then when he was going home, every time they would go by a beach and he would ask them to, okay, stop by the beach. And he would just go out and he would call one of them out with him. And he'd be like standing there, you know, just looking at the beach, you know, uh, like a corniche, looking at the whole sea. And, and he's like, this is nice. Huh? Don't you think this is nice? It's very nice, don't you think? And the other person is not sensitive at that time. So that person's thinking, it's all black because it's nighttime. There's no light, right? So he's not understanding what is nice about the whole thing because it's all black. If you've been to the sea in the, you know, the seaside in, 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 the, right. in the night, it's really, really black. In fact, one of my uh, friends went for honeymoon there and he was scared in Maldives. He went to Maldives. I told him not to spend too long there because he's like, the only light on you, it was new moon. The only light on you is on your bungalow and then you're looking at blackness. So he's like, someone could be just there on a boat looking at you and you don't even know. So anyway, I don't know. anyway so the mind starts playing tricks, I guess. So only so, thing you can hear the waves. Yeah, and he would do this every time and every time. And Maldives, there are no waves also. That's right. Cool. So, um, so every time he would do this, he did like all three times. This is really nice. Huh? And he would just stand there and look around. Very nice, very nice. Let me just look. Uh, so now we realize later on, after a decade or two, <laughs> the person realized that he wasn't actually enjoying the view. He was decontaminating because the sea breeze was being used by the teacher to flush out all the garbage he had collected at the, <laughs> at the Dis disco, disco, disco. So the clubs, right? Of course you can shield, but etheric to a certain extent, you know, there's a limit. Now, why are we talking about that? Yeah, the sea. So the sea is very cleansing. I think I spoke about Colonel Alcott, the, the founder of Theosophy, yeah. right? I spoke about him. Fantastic healer, couldn't get healed. Uh, I, I mean, but he didn't know how to uh, use a salt, a salt bowl. He wasn't disposing of the disease energy properly, cleaning his hands properly. So after some time there, I spoke about this, right? I get confused. So, so, no, so normally he would go swim in the ocean, but what saved him was the second part, which is the pine tree. He didn't use a pine tree, just use an old tree. By the way, about the bearing, always make sure you, I think this is chapter four in the basic pranic healing book, Underground Prana, chapter four, uh, Miracles of Pranic Healing. Uh, and in the ground prana, in the last paragraph, you'll see uh, uh, about the sea and the bearing by sand, in the sand. Now, when you bury yourself, make sure your head is above the sand. <laughs> just a disclaimer, because okay, sorry, we do not clarify. I didn't yeah, I didn't so <laughs> you don't need to be completely immersed under the sand, right? So just only till the neck. Yeah. Make sure you're uh, able to breathe. <laughs> okay, and uh, make sure you're able to get up. Okay. Yeah. That, yes, yes. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Yes. Sorry so, about that. And uh, I think uh, our son loves it. You know, so every time we go to the beach, he's like, "Mom, can you please bury me here?" And then he likes to lie down there for some time and then go into the sea. Yeah. Make sure there are no crabs around. Um, <laughs> They might bite your jibbies. Um, so um, always make sure you swim first because in pranic healing and in healing in general, for thorough healing, you need to cleanse before you energize in general. 
uh, so it's better to swim in the ocean first. Now, most, most people do it. They bury themselves and then they go in the ocean. Ah, I would recommend you swim first. That's what Master Cho would do. He would ask us, and it's in chapter four of the book. You swim first to cleanse the etheric body thoroughly. Then you bury yourself with the intention to absorb ground prana. If you know pranic breathing, you can do that and absorb the ground prana and um, you'll be highly, highly energized. Sometimes your body might feel numb. That means it's just a lot of energy, so it's okay. That happens with trees also. Okay. Unless you've done a meditation. So what's happened is we used to do meditation, cleanse ourselves, then go bury ourselves, and then go to the sea. That's what they've made us do. I don't know. Yeah, whenever okay. yeah I don't know. What my, okay. This is recording. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't remember what we did there. What? All right. Okay. So the, this is the base of the truth in tradition that is strengthening to sleep under a pine tree. Now the pine tree, I don't know whether the needles of the pine tree help, you know, like cactus disintegrating the dirty energy in your aura. But the pine tree is mentioned in chapter one, especially even uh, exclusively by Master Choa uh, in the book Miracles of Pine Healing. Again, I think this is part of chapter one. If I'm not uh, mistaken, it's on page four where he talks about relaxing under a pine tree and uh, certain gigantic trees, which has tremendous amount of prana. Now you have to be careful um, uh, when you're absorbing this prana, there's actually a technique behind it. There's a whole procedure to do it. Uh, and if your body starts to get itchy, that means there's a, it's a diseased tree, right? The tree might look healthy outside, but internally it's not very healthy. So if your body starts to get itchy, it's not dirty energy coming out, it's dirty energy going in. Right, so yeah. uh, generally just be careful of that. If your body starts to feel numb, tingly, uh, that is a good sign. That means there's tremendous amount of energy also. And um, yeah, it's very good. A head facing north is also very, very good. You see the energy moves like that. And remember everything is spiraling, right? So when it moves, now imagine if I had to, uh, if you look at the health rays, the health rays are 90 degree away from the body. So when they go like this, they have, they go, straight through the pores, right? So they go through the pores and they flush out the dirty energy out of the health rays more. So it, it cleans it out. But if it was moving like this, it would entangle the health rays, right? Entangle the health rays. So it's better if it's gently combing in this. So from north to south, you want this type of motion, right? You want this type of motion. And so that's highly beneficial, okay? So that's very, very good. And the radiation of the pine tree will make the man sensitive to the magnetic currents and in addition, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, there is a kind of magnetic tide and outflow and backflow of magnetic energy between the sun and the earth, the turning points of which are noon and uh, midnight, and the great etheric currents which are constantly sweeping. Da, 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 da. These are what we spoke about. Um, there are certain energy currents of the earth that move around in a certain manner. And this is the principle, based on this principle, the principle of feng shui, the principle of uh, uh, vasu, all these principles are, um, are created. But like you have to understand, if there's a, you're a chakra, right? You're a chakra. Right? And this is very, very uh, limited. Um, I could be wrong. So imagine you're, that you, have a, you, are, you have chakras, right? You have energy centers. Imagine you have a chakra. And there is a cell or a molecule in your chakra, which has a body, but there is movement of energy going on in your chakras from up to down, down to up, certain areas, right? There is movement of energy to sustain your body, right? Now, what direction? Now, since the, your energy is more subtle than that small thing in the chakra, it is interpenetrating that uh, your chakra is interpenetrating, the energy of your chakra is interpenetrating that being. So when, you, when it moves in a certain direction, depending on how the energy is flowing in your body, it can create certain movement of energy in that person. It's like, it's like you going against the wind or towards the wind. You understand what I'm saying? Right? There's a flow of energy in a certain manner. Energy flows in a certain calculated manner. Everything is calculated to the last degree. And all that calculation is somewhere. Okay, even in your body, every flow of energy is calculated, all right, uh, as far as I understand it. Okay, it's in the physical permanency. Uh, so all the mathematical formula, okay. Now, if you know the flow of that energy, 
then depending on which way you face, and that energy is interpreted in you. Now imagine you're in the energy of the earth, and the earth is in the energy of the sun, and certain movements is happening in the solar system and in the galaxy, and everything is interpenetrating. The closest one is, say, the solar system. There is energy movement and the earth. So if the energy is moving in a certain manner, and you, for example, that's why the principle of, you have to understand that, um, you see, you've heard the St. Paul saying, uh, it is in him we <coughs> move and have our being. So he's addressing the solar logos. If you can imagine this, your cell, imagine your cell in your body right now, what the cell would say to you would be, it is in you I move and have my being. Right? So similarly, your energy is being interpenetrated by higher energies and in which direction you move with the energy of that, the way it's flowing naturally or against it would make a big difference to your overall energy. And that's why when you turn a certain way, your chakra configuration change depending on how the energy is flowing and where to where it's flowing, up to down, down to up, whatever. Anyway, no more, huh? that's it. <laughs> okay, think about it. No more treats. All right, so let's move on. So um, the last part we'll talk about before we take a break for I this. Too long, sorry. Okay. Yes, so I think we'll only finish it next uh, um, next class. That will be Friday. <laughs> no more after this. this, this book to I don't think we'll finish in September. <laughs> it's a study, so you know. So I don't you know. It's a, a study, so um, I don't have a problem. It's just that we said we'll hopefully finish by September. But anyway, so let's move on. So now we're moving from uh, the understanding is from the dense, yeah, the dense body. We're trying to look at more subtle energy. So we're moving from, remember when we talk about, okay, we didn't talk about it here. Uh, but if you look at it, we, we do say that the physical plane has seven layers, right? So the subtler ones is the one that we're talking about right now, which is higher. The, the dense one is what we can see, feel, and uh, what we call the dense body. So we're moving from the grosser to the subtler. Yes, and uh, what they're saying here is by changing the matter from the grosser to the subtler, the vast store of potential energy which lies dormant may be liberated or and utilized, somewhat as latent heat uh, be liberated by a change of condition of the visible matter. And then they move on to talk about how uh, you, you realize that if you reverse it, we are actually looking at from the subtle trying to make something physical. And that is basically the principle of materialization. And what we're talking about here from grosser to subtle is what we call dematerialization. So when you are doing spiritual practices, you are trying to dematerialize. Those of you who know about Kriya Shakti, you're trying to materialize. So if you look at also certain uh, positions of great deities, they're either trying to materialize or they're trying to dematerialize as well. So even the posture of the body helps you do this. Uh, so to move on, so they're basically talking about how these, um, when you move from subtle to gross or from gross to subtle, you're changing certain things, right? And so that's why they're talking about, for example, when you evaporate water, when you evaporate uh, uh, or you work with ice and then you try to move it from ice to, to a different form, sometimes you can't reverse it anymore. Right? Luckily with uh, ice, water and vapor, you can somehow bring it back, but you lose some of the form in the process. Right? And so we're going to go back, uh, go into that now before I, I give it to Amit. And so they say the faculty is sometimes employed in case of emergency, uh, where a man in the astral, uh, that is an invisible helper, he wants to physicalize certain matter. Then he has to literally, like we spoke about earlier, literally concentrate to keep what he wants to physicalize in space. As soon as his mind wanders off, that's it. Whatever he's trying to materialize, just kind of poof, goes off. And so it's almost like magic, right? So that's what I think magic does. Uh, so they continue to talk about, uh, when you look at uh, the reason why a physical object, after being reduced to etheric condition, afterwards restores its former shape, because they say something called the elemental essence still remains yes so it's almost like uh, they mention a word here i like that word that they use where does it say retains the same shape 
Okay, I can't find that word that I liked. All right, so basically what they say, uh, this physical shape that you have has what you call an element essence. So even if you try to change it from physical to etheric, right? The essence continues to maintain the solid form. So as soon as you move it to the etheric, if you can't sustain it at the etheric level, as soon as your will to maintain it at the etheric level disappears, it will go back into the solid form, right? So that's why you'll find that there are times that people can actually move certain things from one room to another. So the physical is moved into etheric and they can move it through a brick wall into another room. But as soon as they finish holding that, in that etheric matter in that form, it goes back into the other room, right? And for us, it's magic. I mean, it's still magic for me. <laughs> I am still amazed if they do this. But that's what they're talking about here. And so they say, if you look at it, uh, a solid object, yes, can be raised to gaseous form. But if that essence, right, that uh, element essence that they're talking about dissipates, if that dissipates, then it cannot go back to its original form. So if it was solid and you had moved it into the gaseous state, but if that element essence has dis dissipated, is disappeared, right? It doesn't exist anymore. It cannot go back to that solid form, right? And so they have to be very careful when they do this that the solid essence form is still there. They can move it <clears throat> somewhere else ethically and come back. You know, like how people actually can bring a jewelry from somewhere and put it on someone's neck and they're like, oh my God, where did this come from? But <laughs> someone's missing the jewelry. <laughs> So I guess once it's done, once that the magician has held his will to that form, as soon as he, he re releases it, I think it probably goes back to luckily the owner. Anyway, uh, so the reason why they're talking about this is uh, they connect it to you and I, right? And so they say when the human body, right? Uh, you've got to remember that you and I, we have this body. We need this body in this lifetime to continue our journey. However, you and I are not the body. And so that which we are not, yes, which we call the I am, that I am cannot be destroyed, right? It cannot be burned, it cannot be drowned. Uh, however, that higher consciousness from where we come, uh, we need to go back to that. And so when we go back to that, which is basically, if you, want, if you want to call it, this is the solid matter and that's the gaseous matter. When this body is burnt, right? that which is in us, which comes from a higher consciousness, this goes back. Yes, it cannot come back to this form because this form has been dissipated. It's destroyed by fire, right? And so you and I then go back to where we originally came from. Okay, I think I'll end with that. No. no. Um, yeah, whatever she said, I mean, <laughs> are they talking about this concern to ethnic faculty? You have to understand the name of the chapter is Etric Faculty. So <laughs> it has to do something with Etric Faculty. I'll give you my point of view on this, in addition to what Sumi said. The changing matter from gross to subtle, kind of the vast store of, uh, which, of potential energy to, uh, which lies dormant, may be liberated or utilized somewhat as latent energy, may be liberated by a change of condition. One second, so maybe it's time. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I thought it would um, go to the side. So, um, let's see what this cross is. So, okay, I forgot. Anyway, um, all right, so forgot one part, but the other part is um, when you're looking at something from going from gross to subtle, then the author has written about potential energy. And the author is talking about liberated and then utilized and not explain what is utilized for and what is being liberated. My thinking goes towards Kundalini energy. All right. Kundalini energy is Kundalini energy is basically potential energy. All right. We don't have time to go into detail. So reread this from this point of view and see what you think about the uh, Kundalini energy will be released, will be reutilized. Um, by a change of condition in visible matter. And not only that, so these processes also awaken the Kundalini. Not only that, a reversal of the above process enables one to change matter. Okay, all this Sumi has explained on going back and forth and the will and the concentration and the power and all of this. 
we power solar will be raised to gases okay all of this is very interesting and the soul um, now <clears throat> As soon as the same force is withdrawn, the matter force by equation into the You don't know want the soul where. Hmm? Anyway, look, let's look at what we know. We know that there's a certain amount of energy that comes in to your body through the uh, physical permanency, radiates outwards, holds the etheric body in place. And the process of dying includes reducing the flow of that energy so uh, it has a withdrawal of energy or reducing the flow and so that energy is produced 24 hours a day 365 days a year all the time and the moment it stops even your body disintegrates even your uh, etheric body will disintegrate okay so that is what uh, the whole uh, whole energy is about now interestingly enough that energy coming down through the spiritual cord into the physical permanency corresponds to, um, I mean, I don't have to go into that, but for those of you who've done achieving one, it corresponds to the will aspect and it corresponds to sat or power aspect. And if you un un understand the secret behind that power aspect, you can start to a certain extent on a lower level, start utilizing this movement of energy and bringing in physical object and be materializing or whatever you want. That's it. We can answer the questions, but there are lots because the only one I answered was the orange one. Well, we don't have time. Yeah, but there might uh -huh. be a lot. So, um, okay, I felt there's not that many. So I felt this after my holiday in New Zealand. I just knew there was a huge change in me. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's really good. Fabulous. I'm glad you could feel it. And played the hobbits. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, does etheric faculty also get an awakened such a Yes. Uh, to a certain extent, they do. It's easier to do the practices that awaken the ethnic faculty. Sometimes there are teachers who can actually open it at that point for you. So you might be able to see, this happened to, a, a, there were two of us, I couldn't see anything, but the other girl was able to actually see uh, these little beings in the night uh, in that particular hotel. Oh, fireflies. Uh, no, they were down. Yeah, and, <laughs> and oh. I couldn't see anything, but she was able to see, and uh, after that, she was able to see a lot more. Right, so she was able to say uh, and talk about things around us, uh, which I didn't. But yeah, there, some people can even help others open it up. Go ahead. Yeah, so you hugged a tree, yeah. uh, and that's fantastic. Yeah, it really hugging, hugging is actually direct contact. That's really really good. In fact, healing is always better with direct contact, but there are too many legal issues involved. Uh, <laughs> SP cleansing may make up. Yeah, because the moment you touch, there's you know the receptivity and all doesn't come into factor. So. Uh, like different vitamins for different purposes in the body and different sources. Yeah, to a certain extent. I was going to actually say like a buffet. You know, you have fat, carbs, and uh, protein, but you know, there are much more delicious ways and much more nasty ways you can eat that, but it didn't, it didn't sync with the example. So. All right. Uh, when you have your solar plexus sometimes cleanse and you yawn, it's, it's basically the energy coming out. If you remember the movie, The Green Mile, you know, how he would suck the dirty energy out of the patient and then, you know, yawn it out. Uh, so that's one way of releasing not just dirty energy from the body, but also maybe your brain needs yeah. some oxygen. It's a sad movie. It's a saddish movie. It's there in, uh, I think it's on Netflix, but we watched it like decades ago. When in fact, came. one of our uh, colleagues in the States at that time, uh, he, would, he was healing a sports guy or something like that, or his friend. And he was just sweeping his back. They, they were just there, you know, his green mile was all being talked about. And he's like, oh, I have a pain. So he did some sweeping and the person got better. Uh, and then after some time, just to pull his leg, he was like, <laughs> so the person started to freak out. Like, oh my God, what are you doing? So, Vitamin something? Yeah, I answered that. Okay, so, um, all you have to talk all, all you talk is information you take your own, which we experience. Most of them were not able to understand how it happened. Thanks to both of you. Okay. You're welcome. And we are done. Oh, really? I thought there were so many questions yeah. that I, we were not, not able to answer. Okay, people, thank you so much. Uh, we will hopefully end by next week. Sorry, this week. Uh, this chapter, and we'll move to the next chapter next week. All right? So let's just say a Thanksgiving prayer. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chok, Oxfilot Maha Guruji Nene, 
to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, the great beings and teachers of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, wisdom, and light, to all the nature spirits and beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and our internet, thank you for your presence. Thank you for all the light and knowledge and wisdom imparted to us today. Thank you for blessing us with greater clarity and understanding. Help us to use these techniques, use this information to make ourselves better instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste, Bon Appetit, and um, see you on Friday, same time. Yeah, bye. Our Hatha Yogis tomorrow, 8 a.m. is Kundalini. Yeah, so if you're joining us, that's what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow is Kundalini. Bye. Ending the live and oopsie. All right. Ending for all people. Enjoy. Have a good time with family. We'll see you Friday night. Bye.